Well, hey guys, happy Saturday. I am in a bubbly mood yet again. I don't know what got into me. I decided spontaneously this morning to put on a sheet mask, something I rarely ever do. I got these sheet masks, a bib. It's a K-Beauty brand. You can get this on Amazon, like a pack. The ingredients look really promising. It's got um, a decicide and a variety of extracts from Centella, which are helpful for calming down redness, irritation, and helping with healing. It's also got licorice root in it, which is good for reducing redness, hyperpigmentation, and it's got, I think it's got caffeine in it too, so it'll probably give a, a temporary kind of reduction in redness through that. And the signature ingredient, I guess, is heart leaf extract, which is probably rich in antioxidants as well. Um, and it's pH five to six. I had it on for about roughly 17 or 18 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off so you can leave it on up to 20 minutes. But it's an, the other thing I like about it is it like actually fits my face. Sometimes they're like, they don't fit my face. I'm just gonna pat it in. You get a lot of the essence in this mask. Sometimes you get sheet masks and they're like dry and there's nothing in them. There is enough in this that you can cover your whole whole body in the essence if you wanted to. I'm gonna put it on my hands. I'm wearing my new robe. I decided to have a little morning spa session, if you will. Feels good, yeah. I don't know, I just decided to do that. Today I am going to run errands. I wanna go by the P.O. box and I'm gonna go, of course, to Costco. I'll show you guys a grocery haul. And then tonight I'm going to uh, show you guys a little tip for applying tretinoin. Um, anyways, uh, I'm gonna just put on moisturizer on over this. My face feels pretty good. I'm gonna do the um, Round Lab Mugwort um, cream that I've been really enjoying as of lately. Uh, I'm just gonna put that on to kind of seal everything in. Yeah, this particular mask, you don't have to rinse off the... Wow, that is, that is some kind of hydration, that mask. All right, that was, that was worth pursuing. Yeah, I don't typically do sheet masks, but that one, <laughs> dang, I'm feeling shiny, shiny, shiny. <laughs> uh, I slept like a rock last night, although rocks are non-sentient, so they don't really sleep. Uh, I'm just waiting for this to absorb so I can put my sunscreen on. That's the big deciding factor. What sunscreen should I wear this morning? I have this Bondi Sands one here, but I don't really want to wear it because I know if I do, it'll burn around my eyes. I also have the Neutrogena Invisible Daily Defense one. I think I'm gonna do that. My skin's feeling pretty dry. The one thing I don't like about this sunscreen though is it's orange, like why? This morning, I did a workout from MadFit. I, I've done a few of her workouts here and there. But this one that I did this morning was like an inner thigh one. I'll link it down below for you guys. Um, it was pretty good. Yeah, you guys were recommending some of her videos when I was complaining about not being motivated to lift weights. Um, and of course, what video do I do? An inner thigh one that doesn't involve weights and no equipment. Well, hey guys, I am on my way running errands. Ooh, Taco Cabana looks in need of attention. Uh, I guess it's okay. It just looks a little run down in comparison to usual. Like, what the, what's going on over there? I don't think I've ever eaten at Taco Cabana. If I remember correctly, there's nothing on their menu that's really vegan friendly. Maybe like lettuce, which, yeah. Um, Taco Bell, on the other hand, while I know it's like not good food, it is very vegan friendly, Taco Bell. 
Speaking of vegan friendly fast food, did you guys hear Dunkin Donuts got avocado toast? Um, I kind of want to try it just for the novelty of experiencing it. Um, but uh, yeah, comment below on if you've had it. Apparently they put like everything but the bagel seasoning on it. I wish that more, I mean, I'm not really into eating fast food, but it would be fun if more fast food places like came out. Wouldn't it be cool if like each fast food place came out with a like vegan, vegan, a vegan signature item, like, I don't know, seasonally, that'd be cool. Um, I would eat more ass food, I guess, just to try things. See, when they release something like that, it kind of piques your interest. Because, I mean, like, how many versions of, like, the same burger patty on top of cheese on top of special sauce? I mean, after a while, it's pretty much the same thing. Speaking of the same thing, I mean, that's Taco Bell's, like, whole menu. The same, like, four ingredients just layered in a different order and, like, with a different name. <laughs> like... Crunchwrap Supreme. I I've never had that before, but isn't that like hard shell plus the meat plus the tomato lettuce combo wrapped up in a soft shell as opposed to like a soft shell taco? You know, it's like the same same ingredients just wrapped or layered or stacked differently. Uh, like you watch, I, maybe they've already had this at one point, but I imagine at one point they're going to come out with a Taco Bell lasagna. Have they not come out with that? I mean, it'd be easy breezy for them to come out with. All they would have to do would be like layer some chips down, put a little, you know, bean, cheese, mambo combo, layer, layer soft tortilla. Italians are cringing right now at the idea of a Taco Bell lasagna. But I think it's what their next menu item should be. Taco Bell lasagna. They could call it Mexania. Like a Mexican lasagna, even though Mexicans are cringing too because the idea of Taco Bell and their culture is just like, they're not the same thing whatsoever. They're just not. I mean, yeah. Yeah, when people call Taco Bell Mexican food, it's like... No. I'm here at the post office. Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? Five, four, two, two, three, four. What? Boy, drama at the P.O. box. Um very strange. I don't know if I caught that on camera. You saw I um, went to put my key in the um, lock and the lock was simply not having my key. And I was like, this is strange. Um, because in the past, you know, I've had issues where if I, you know, get behind and don't come to the PO box and there are a lot of cards from you guys in there, then the cards will kind of get hung up on the, the latch mechanism of the lock. And uh, I kind of have to wiggle things around. But this time, first of all, I, I, it hasn't been a while since I've been here. I was here the other day. Um, and I, you know, I, I couldn't physically get the key in, which has never happened. It's usually, you know, that I can't turn it if there are too many letters in there. So I thought, this is strange. Like, what's going on? Went and talked to the guy, showed him what was going on. And it looked as though somebody had tried to bash my lock, so it was completely inoperable. And the only thing in the actual box was a slip to retrieve a package and a key to retrieve a package from one of the little lockers. No cards or anything. Um, he said either it had been smashed, like somebody was trying to get in, which is scary, or just that one little strip of, of cardstock that they used to notify you that you have a package behind the desk. He thought that maybe that was kind of messing things up, but that seemed odd. Yeah, it was really weird. So he had to go behind the, you know, the, the wall of boxes or whatever from the other side. And he took what looked like a baseball bat and ran, had to ram the door open to bust open the lock and then install a new lock in. Well, 
it was this back and forth as to the like apparently the postal service is short on the right screws for the locks or you know they're kind of because the screw shot out when he did that landed on the floor somewhere and you know the floor in the post office is like you know where's waldo trying to find this tiny screw so we sat there trying to find the screw for a while finally found the screw and he was able to install a new lock for me which i'm grateful for i had to get new keys but that was weird weird, weird. Ooh, the little succulent gardens are back in stock at costco 16.99 <gasps> i love that one Okay, this bevy bar is brilliant. It's a cooler, but then it pops up to be a table. That's cool. Uh, 99 dollars holds 75 12-ounce cans. That's cool. I like that. Ew, I like these park lights. Oh, God. That. Oh, my God. That's heavenly. Ah, oh, so soft. $19.99. I just want to stay here and pet it. Is this like a beanbag chair? Crash. $119.99 for this. I bet it is. <laughs> He's just there pondering the meaning of life in his uh, zen spot. I, I bet this is really difficult to move around, like to vacuum around. This is new, the Bayou Berry Organic Kombucha. It sounds good, strawberry and honeysuckle. All right, my little produce haul for the week. I got my spinach, my power greens, my gala apples for my slow cooker apples. They didn't have the Texas ruby red grapefruit at Costco, but they had these sun-kissed ones. So I hope they're as good as the Texas ones. Anyways, I uh, got some broccoli. I have been craving broccoli lately, so always follow that craving. Uh, I got Sunsweet Prunes. They are currently on Ibotta, although I don't know if the Kirkland Signature label is going to, you know, if it's going to count, but whatever. I was out of prunes. Um, I got more of my Italian Volcano lemon juice. This was new at Costco, and it looks delicious. These no sugar keto cups. They're basically like you know, like a Reese cup. One of them's dark chocolate and peanut butter and the other one's dark chocolate fudge brownie. And they are vegan. There's no dairy or anything in them. So I look forward to having those. They look delicious. Uh, speaking of no dairy, I got some Almond Breeze coconut almond milk. This is my favorite flavor, I think, of non-dairy milk. The Mambo combo of almond and coconut is really good. Um, I got a watermelon because that's currently on my bottom and I swung by the uh, Mrs. Dash because I was in the mood for some more Mrs. Dash and I got the lemon pepper but I also saw this everything but the salt seasoning um, so yeah I love the combination of everything but the bagel seasoning so I think I'm gonna enjoy that maybe I'll even put that on my broccoli <laughs> Wow. Okay. Uh, I got yellow mustard because Costco stopped carrying the big uh, double pack of French's. Uh, I hope that's a limited, limited time limitation. Anyways, I got that and I got Dijon mustard because something I was looking at some recipe. Maybe it was for, maybe it was for like a like a vegan scramble, I think, called for Dijon mustard. Uh, yeah, I think it was a tofu scramble I wanted to make this week, calls for Dijon mustard. So I got some of that. More of my angel hair coleslaw. And then I got some mop dishcloths. These were on sale. I needed some more of those. And they had mat napkins that match my placemats at Kroger, and these were on sale. So I got a two pack of those because I've been so happy with the placemats. And then this, I don't know, it just spoke to me, this Lakeside S'mores candle. It's one of those wick type that crackles, and I go back and forth with those. Sometimes they're cool, I love the mood, and other times they kind of give me the heebie-jeebies. I don't know, like especially when I'm like at night when I'm by myself, like working at the computer and it's like quiet and it's just like, it's kind of 
it's annoying slash freaky. I don't know. Does anybody else feel that way about these? But yeah, this smelled good and it was on sale. So I decided I'd take the risk of being freaked out. All right, you guys, approximately seven minutes ago, I fired up the new candle. I can already smell it from the kitchen at least. Uh, smells good and I'm not hearing the creepy crackles. So let's see it. Maybe, maybe as it burns with time, it'll get crackly. I probably ignited it wrong because it said, I, I, I lit it and then I read here, see burn instructions and warnings on bottom label. Oops. <laughs> so I may have messed it up, but it smells good. Ah, score. I just uploaded my Costco receipt and the Kirkland uh, Sun Suites are eligible bachelors. Ah, 55 cents. <gasps> Cha-ching! Move over, Warren Buffett. <laughs> Got a new millionaire in town. 55 cents. All right, that's just the Costco one, though. Let's do Croge next. Woohoo! 10 cents. So I'm 65 cents richer. Minus whatever hundred dollars I just spent on groceries. <laughs> All right, so this is what was in the P.O. box. Um, it's from this company, Skincare Sleeve. I guess it's these little sleeves so you don't get water all over your wrists and arms when you're washing your face. Cool. They sent me two of them. And then these were also in there, these adorable mugs from Zazzle. There was no card, so whoever sent these to my P.O. box, thank you so much. Dr. Chava Beans. <laughs> this is adorable. Prescription coffee. <laughs> Take as much as needed and as long as needed. This one, unfortunately, the handle broke off in the box. Um, so that's unfortunate, but look how cute it is. It's got me on there. It's got my channel banner. This is really pretty. I'm gonna use this for pens since the handle fell off, but thank you so much. Hey guys, I just got out of the shower and I washed my face while I was in the shower so it's completely clean. I'm gonna show you guys simple, easy way to apply your retinoid. Because my skin is damp, technically I could put my retinoid on right now. Uh, that would actually increase the penetration of the retinoid into the skin, applying it on the skin while it's damp. But I don't like to do that because it does increase irritation. Now I've been using tretinoin for so many, you know, for a long time now, so. I probably would be fine doing that, truthfully, but I'm just gonna show you guys. This is particularly helpful when you're starting out. Just go ahead, while the skin is still damp, just go ahead and apply a moisturizer. I'm using the Aveeno, Aveeno Calm and Restore Oat Gel Moisturizer. I love this. I'm gonna put it to my face and neck and around my eyes. There's no need for a separate eye cream. All right, and the other thing that's really helpful to do is, I mean, anytime you're using an ingredient that exfoliates, um, it's helpful to take a little bit of uh, petrolatum and just put it on your eyelids. That way, you know, it doesn't migrate there because the eyelid skin's really thin and it can, it can cause a lot of irritation. So I'm, I'm just gonna do this. So at this point, it's the perfect time to put on tretinoin or whatever retinoid or retinol you happen to be using because the skin is clean, it's dry, but it's moisturized. So that helps in reducing irritation. See, you want your skin to be clean, but if you wash your face, rinse it, rinse off the cleanser, you know, rinse it all off, and then pat dry your skin, you're pulling out water out of your skin and you're starting with a dry, a dry face. So if you do that and put the tretinoin on that dry dry skin, it's really gonna make it more irritating. So the, putting the moisturizer on first really helps. Now you don't wanna put something, a moisturizer that's like super occlusive. Like you wouldn't wanna put Vaseline all over your face and then try and put tretinoin on. It's not gonna penetrate this. But you know, a lightweight oil-free moisturizer, it's gonna be just fine um, and it will it decrease the irritation. So as you can see, my skin is, is dry. Um, yeah, moisturized. All right, now, the second mistake that people often make is that they use too much. All you need, let's squeeze it out, is like that much, like a pea-sized amount. And the way to put it on is to just do a dot on the forehead, a dot on each cheek, and a dot on each side of the face. And then you just rub over the cheeks and out to the sides of the face, and rub up.
and up on the sides of the jaws, the side of the face. You're avoiding this area where the skin is sensitive and you're avoiding around the eyes. So you're gonna go up and out to, to really get a nice, thin, even film. It's not about keeping it on there. It's about a thin film, evenly distributed. And then go up on the sides. I don't do my upper lip, especially now that I'm dealing with a lot of irritation from the mask on my upper lip, because you guys know I've been having this issue where I put on my mask, my, my pandemic mask, my nose starts running and I can't wipe my nose and it causes a lot of irritation on the skin of my upper lip. So I'm especially avoiding that area, uh, but I don't typically really put tretinoin in there. I mean, you can, but I don't know. I just find that the upper lip is kind of a challenging area in and of itself, so I tend to ignore it, except when it comes to sunscreen. So yeah, that is, that's my quick and easy tip for applying uh, tretinoin or uh, dapolene or any kind of retinol. I don't put it, it on my neck because the neck skin is very thin, but I do have a video about like anti-aging your neck and how to use retinoids there, do so conservatively, etc. So check that video out if you're wondering about the neck. But yeah, I just do, I just do my face. Um, I should be doing the backs of my hands, but I'm too lazy. Um, anyways, guys, I hope that was helpful to you. My battery is about to die. So thank you so much for making it to the end of the vid. I hope you had a great Saturday. Was it in the park? It's not the 4th of July. <laughs> Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.